Cities spell hope and create dreams. More than half the world's population now lives in towns and cities. They not only reflect the vision of their makers, but also mirror the daily struggles, anxieties and aspirations of the millions who inhabit them. While our cities grow in leaps and bounds to accommodate our needs, there is an ever-increasing demand for energy. In fact, urban areas account for three quarters of the global energy consumption and close to 80% of the world's carbon emissions. Scientists are certain that such energy-intensive activities are changing the composition of the atmosphere. The increasing concentration of greenhouse gases in the atmosphere is altering the planet's climate and causing global warming. The primary greenhouse gases include water vapor, carbon dioxide, methane, nitrous oxide, and ozone. These gases are a natural part of our atmosphere and prevent heat from escaping into space. But human activities, such as the burning of fossil fuels like petrol, diesel, and coal, along with uncontrolled deforestation, have contributed to an abnormal and unprecedented increase in the greenhouse gases. This has escalated the occurrences of heat waves, cyclones, floods, and salinization of the coastline to unprecedented levels. According to the Global Climate Risk Index 2012, between 1991 and 2010, more than 710,000 people died as a direct consequence of 14,000 extreme weather events and losses of more than 2.3 trillion US dollars had to be incurred. As of today, there is a real possibility of the catastrophic disruption of the fragile life-sustaining ecological system that holds this world together. Today, India is faced with the challenge of sustaining its rapid economic growth while dealing with the global threat of climate change. The National Action Plan on Climate Change, the NAPCC, identifies measures to promote India's development objectives while also yielding co-benefits for addressing climate change effectively. It outlines a number of steps to simultaneously advance India's development and climate change-related objectives of adaptation and mitigation. The Indian government has taken several important steps to curb energy emissions in our cities. Efforts are on to maximize the utilization of renewable sources like solar energy and biogas energy, enhancing energy efficiency in public services, recycling of material and improving waste management, extending the energy conservation building code, and developing sustainable public transport, among many others. Let us examine some of these efforts by our city managers in making our cities more climate resilient in the course of their day-to-day -day engagements. The rapid growth in urbanization in Indian cities has resulted in a surge in transport demand. The accelerated demand of transport services has led to an increase in private vehicles, decline in the share of public transport in Indian cities, resulting in congestion, pollution, increase in traffic-related fatalities and injuries, and a sheer neglect of pedestrians and cyclists. The transport sector is considered as one of the main sources of greenhouse gas emissions that contributes to climate change. The Ministry of Environment and Forest, Government of India, estimated in 2007 that road transport accounted for 6.5% of total greenhouse gas emissions, amounting to 123 million tonnes of carbon dioxide equivalent. The biggest challenge Indian cities face is to meet mobility demands of its citizens in a much more sustainable manner. Many of our cities have recognized this aggravating problem and have started to take appropriate steps towards solving it. Over the past couple of decades, Delhi has seen the highest growth of private cars among Indian cities, with almost 1400 new vehicles added to its road network each day. The congestion would have been much worse had the Delhi government not built and operated a Mass Rapid Transit System or MRTS that is the Delhi Metro in 2002. Today DMRC has, a, has 141 stations with 6 lines and a 170 km network. We are carrying around 28 lakhs passengers a day. We have the frequency of 2 minutes 30 seconds. Uh, during the slack hours, but during peak, we are running to uh, 2 minutes 18 seconds frequency. We provide the frequency as per the requirement. DMRC estimates that the Delhi Metro has been able to attract 1.17 lakh private vehicle users towards its system. 
DMRC has been certified by the UN to receive carbon credits of around 6.3 lakh tons a year through the Clean Development Mechanism. DMRC has also been recognized for its clean and renewable energy technologies. 67 lumen per watt energy efficient tube lights. Maximum utilization of daylight in stations. Sun films in trains. The rooftop solar power plant at the Dwarka Sector 21 metro station with technical support of GIZ generates 500 kilowatt of power. We have a very ambitious plan to have a capacity of 20 megawatt solar power plant and that is in next one year we will be installing. The trains even have a regenerative braking system that produces electricity while braking and feeds it back to the system. Are we are saving to the tune of 30 to 35 percent of energy. However, the challenge still remains in getting more people to the station more efficiently. The last mile connectivity. DMRC role is limited because we are only running the feeder buses. We are operating a system of around 170 buses and 1,20,000 passengers are travelling a day. The rest of the 28 lakh commuters are connected to metro stations by buses, cycle rickshaws, three-wheelers, private cars, two-wheelers and by walking. Organizing and integrating different modes of transport efficiently will improve the last mile connectivity and attract more people to use the metro system. This will become even more important in the next phase of the Delhi Metro as 140 kilometers of new routes will connect satellite towns to Delhi. In phase 3 we are working with UTPAC that they will give a, they are designing our stations with the city authorities so that the a better integration is possible. So we are working in that a lot has been done but I would say a, a lot is yet to be done. Is it possible to create a rail-like system without rails? Ahmedabad's Bus Rapid Transit System or BRTS is a high-capacity urban public transit system. By providing exclusive right-of-way for the buses, it ensures that buses are not delayed by mixed traffic congestion and hence results into faster travel time. The BRTS aims to combine the capacity and speed of metro with the flexibility lower cost and simplicity of a bus system. In Ahmedabad, the system is known as Janmarg, the people's road. The central lanes are exclusively for buses. The rest of the space is designated to private vehicles, two-wheelers and separate lanes for cycles and pedestrians. The objective of the BRT is to create an efficient system that provides an alternative to the users who prefer private modes of transportation. Today, Ahmedabad Janmar BRT is having 89 kilometers special corridor divided in 127 bus stations and operating through 160 buses having a 13 routes. Today, we have a 150,000 riders in the, our BRT system. Ahmedabad is the first South Asian city to receive a Sustainable Transport Award from the International Steering Committee composed of ITDP, Embark World Bank, GIZ, Clean Air Asia, ICLI, TRL and Dispacio. The award recognizes leadership and vision of the city in the field of sustainable transportation and urban livability. BRTS includes an integrated transportation management system which comprises advanced vehicle tracking ability, automatic fare collection, passenger information system that improve the system's efficiency. Our BRTS routes are designed in such a way that more than 80% of the lower and middle segment societies are covered. You can see here that we cover the central bus stations, central railway stations and in the periphery there are the industrial area and also we try to cover the educational and institutional area of the city. In short, it fulfills the whole transport needs of the citizen of Ahmedabad. The challenge remains to make BRT attractive to car users as well as affordable to the poor. There is a model shift of 52% of two-wheeler, 5% of four-wheelers into the BRT side of it. 
Consequently, it reduces the number of vehicles on the road. You get surprised to know there is a 15% reduction in emission to in the BRTS route in compared to the non-BRTS routes. And that is why UN has conferred award relating to the climate change to Ahmedabad Janmar in the year 2012 in Doha. Limiting encroachment on pedestrian and cycle paths and focusing on non-motorized transport infrastructure may also help reduce road congestion and hence emissions. Cycle rickshaws are the oldest non-motorized transport in India. Operating on pedal power, it creates no emissions. Even today, they are a very common sight in northern India. But these cycle rickshaws are not ordinary. These are the eco cabs of Fazilka, a small town in Punjab, 10 kilometers from the India-Pakistan border. They have integrated information technology into their operation. Residents in Fazilka can call a cycle rickshaw in advance. We want to promote this as a service industry. If the taxi is available on a phone call, why not a cycle rickshaw? Because it's an ideal mode of a transportation in a small town. There are designated tea shops in Fazilka that act as customer service for EcoCab since rickshaw stands and tea shops are always together. A customer calls the designated number, the tea shop owner notes the address and sends the first available rickshaw in the stand to the customer. Now at present that all rickshawalas are 100% equipped with the mobile phone and now people have an option that they can call directly to the call center as well as to the rickshawala. Right now, about 400 cycle rickshaws are under the eco-cab scheme in Fazilka. Cycle rickshaws are affordable and can comfortably maneuver old and narrow alleys in the city. EcoCab is a brilliant experiment of using technology to make an already sustainable transport more efficient. Other cities such as Chandigarh are recognizing this and adopting services like EcoCab. The challenge will be to encourage private car users to shift to cycle rickshaws for short distances. These are just a few examples of what future transport may look like. There is no standard formula for achieving sustainability. The plan and financing need to be creative. However, a strong collective of leadership at the city level is a must. Leaders must recognize that people occupy center stage in our cities. Hence, the goal should be to improve accessibility to urban transportation modes. The investment in sustainable public transport pays off in the long term, taking into consideration the health implications of polluted air, time lost due to congestion, expensive oil import and climate change mitigation.